Hello, beautiful people. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the DLBC Singles that we're Corner. Today. It's actually a place where we explore relationship from the Christian perspective, how to find the right person to marry, and how to build a happy Christian home together. I'm your friend, your sister, princess, and Today, with me, I have Madame Deborah Awokoya, and we will be discussing what it means to be at a certain age and not yet married. Now, you are 30. Let me just put it as a question that was asked. I am over 30, and I am not married. I don't have children. Should I be? worried so that's a lady or a man whoever it is mostly a lady would be worried when she's her clock is ticking and she's getting to a certain age in her life where she wonders okay now i've got everything that's if she's this academic person or someone who is career-minded i've advanced i've graduated i've seen the world I have a good job, I have a good life, contact, I have everything, but I'm not married yet. I don't have anybody to marry. Should I be worried or should I be concerned? So uh, what are your, what do you think about this kind of lady? Should she be concerned? Should a lady be concerned because she's, a certain, she's at a certain age and she's not married? Okay. I'm so glad and happy to be with you today and to discuss this topic. Um, a lot of our singles, especially um, singles from African descent, um, are always under a pressure, societal pressure, to be married uh, or after 30, you are kind of considered getting old an older lady, and family members, friends, um, relatives start to pressure you. They just want you to be married. And kindly speaking, we need to also ask these ladies that are over 30, if really they are worried, is it, are they worried about not having their babies because like it's wanting to be over 30 not married and child and don't and you do not have any child so what you call child free look at mm. it child free or that you're over 30 and you are a single mother that you have had a child out of wedlock and now you're looking for someone to get married to you yes um, the concerns of such ladies are different. Yeah. If you have had a, a child already, um, the worries of such ladies are that who is going to uh, love me and also love my baby, take care of my babies along with me. Yeah. And the other ladies that are over 30, that are, that are over 30 and do not, are not married, their worries is that I have not had any baby. Time is going. Yeah. Uh, I don't have my babies now. I may not be able to have my babies if uh, they don't come. And with what's happening, the biology, the you know, the disadvantage of biology when it comes to women, that at a particular age, uh, it's not easy to have a baby. Yeah. That can make a lady worry. But sometimes we've not also asked the question, what about those ladies that sincerely, when they are in their rooms, they don't see themselves, they don't imagine that they should be a wife. Or a mother. They don't even, you said? Or even a mother. Or even a mother. They don't, they don't want to be mothers. They don't want to be mothers. Some of these, some of these young ladies of over 30, they... They don't mind taking care of the children of others, but they just feel that, okay, 
they'll come to me. I play with them, but they don't they, are, they don't belong to me. So I know they are not for me. They'll go back to their parents, you know. So they yeah. don't want any child that's going to come to them and it's going to be with them all through their days. And, you know, they don't have any other thing to do. Mm -hmm. They have to take care of the child. They must be responsible for the child. And knowing fully well that psychologically, many ladies, when they have a child, and it's just a normal thing, a biology, biology, biological thing. And when you look at the animal kingdom, you realize that it's very, very common in the animal kingdom that a female takes care of her offspring and that the male does not, sometimes may not care about the offspring. Yeah. So the danger, the fear of having a child and being the only one to uh, cater for that child is yeah. there too. Mm -hmm. So what is the, the informed choices? Are ladies given the opportunity to make their choices of whether they want to mother a baby or not? With the advent of... um the advent of this issue of feminism as they call it and people want uh, the era of a lady saying that my body is my body i must control my body i must be able to you know uh, decide what happens with my body mm -hmm. some ladies have are of the opinion that if you are they should have you know um they should be able to satisfy that sexual desires but yeah. protect themselves so that they don't have any babies for children of god those are christians and that understand that their bodies are the temple of god and they mm -hmm. cannot give their bodies just anyhow to satisfy their sexual urges yeah um, if we ask them have we ever come into the place of conversing and really asking them what is really your desire is it to mother a child to raise a family or your desire is just to have is your sexual urge satisfied because we don't talk about this a lot we have this opinion. and maybe it's not for for, for sexual urge it's just for companionship some people they get married just because they want to have a companion a friend and well one sexual partner yes, somebody. You, can, you can have a friend that's not you're not married to because you must you be married to somebody to have your friend? I don't know. Many but when the guy gets married, married, then he becomes, I mean, you wouldn't really have access to the guy anymore, right? Because his wife would be in his life and maybe she wouldn't like that. You're always calling and always trying to. So you're, talk you're, to talking, her about, you're talking about a, a friend, an opposite sex friend. As in, you're talking about a male gender friend. You're not talking about just a friend. You're not well, talking about friend. Some, pe some people like to have, I mean, there are some ladies that have males that are their friends guys that are their friends right and they, so what, and they are what, very good what friends. really makes a, a lady not to be able to continue to to have those why would guys not continue to be a friend um because she's single or because they are married that don't after he has gotten married uh -huh, so well there's i mean even with our brothers there's a we it's like as if they are more conscious of their time. You can't just call them anymore anytime that you want to call them because they're married, right? And then the wife might start to pick offense and start feeling like, oh, I know she has been your friend for such a long time, but this relationship now, I don't think that it's ideal that you guys still talk very closely. And there is this, um, the commitment of this man will no longer be for, the, the relationship will no longer be that, open friendly like can, we, relationship. Can, can we also can we also realize that there are a lot of married people that are no friends they are, they are, they are, they are married couples that are enemies they don't love themselves as in they are no friends to each other the, the, the lady cannot even play with the guy really she cannot talk freely her mind with him yeah but no, no... That's, not, that's not the point the point is this the point is that if you have a lady that has a friend who 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 used to be a guy, she might not be able to keep that friend like that for and such a long time. Friends. She can change a friend. Hmm. Okay, she now she wants to be friend. in the market of, of, of getting new friends. Um, so I the, the question is this: I know that we are you're coming from the perspective of 
um, there are some ladies that really don't intend to to have a home, is that to get married to a man and to have children. Okay, but now we're just asking, we're talking about a lady now who actually wants to get married. Okay, she wants to have children, but she's over 30 and maybe life is happening to her and she, she has not been able to find someone to settle down with. And she's over 30 and she's asking, should I be worried? Should I be concerned that I'm over 30 and I'm not yet married. I'm not in any relationship. Yeah, if you, if you want to be concerned as a lady that you're over 30, you want to allow yourself to be concerned or to be worried that you're over 30, you're not married and you don't have a child, then you, you in the long run, think, take the route of settling down with somebody that does not fit all your choices. If if you, you got to 30, you got to age 30, amongst all the pool of friends you ever had, mm -hmm. no one was very right interested in saying they want to go, they want to work uh, the life journey, life journey forever. Yeah. As in, they want to go with you forever. You got to 30 and nobody came to say, okay, can we can we be friends or can we, you know? Yeah, marriage is a risk. Having children is a risk. So the, the truth is that the age bracket of guys, guys, when they get to their, their mid-30s, majorly when they get to 40s and above then the many of them some of them or many become more stabilized financially mm -hmm. so now if you one of the reasons why you did not want to get married was because you are looking for financial stability or financial maturity yeah then you're getting to 30 you the the, you know, the pool of men you can get married from be, is, is, it becomes lesser. Yeah, yeah, it reduces. But it becomes less. But because the guy wants a younger girl. They are right? matured men now. They know what they want. You know what you want. At over 30, you mm. know what you want. They know what they want. So in the long run, when you meet with somebody and you don't allow yourself to be pressurized because I'm over 30 or something, you just give yourself time. I'm over 30. Okay, I'm now over 30. I'm now over 30, but now I'm matured. I know what I want. Mm -hmm. And now you have this age bracket of guys of in their 35 or 40. They are now settled, men. They have they have started doing something with their lives. Yeah. Because many of the guys that are maybe when you are in your 20s, and maybe the guy is just in his early 30s or, or in his late 20s, many of those guys, they are not settled. They don't even know where they are going to. So when you're coming in married in marital relationship with them, you must be very, there is a place of patience. There's a place of molding. And then what betide you if you come in married relationship with a man that is not ready that you should mold yourselves into the mold you want and mm -hmm. go into the kind of person you really want to go into. It does not have, you know, a lot of things need to be, need to be fine-tuned. A lot of things need to be fine tuned. Just very few guys in their late thirties, in their late twenties and early thirties, know where they are going to. Are mm -hmm. uh, are already good leaders. They know what they are looking for in a woman, and they they know what their next plan is. Mm -hmm. Some of them in their late twenties or in their early thirties. They, they just want to marry because others are married. My friends have gotten married. They just have to get married. Oh, yeah. I'm tired of cooking. I'm tired of cooking. And people are mocking me that I'm still living in my parents' house. I need to get myself a house. Or I want to have sex. It's time to have sex. I've kept myself for those that are keeping themselves. I've mm -hmm. kept myself saying, no, now it's time for me to have sex. So after sex, they're not even thinking about what happens after sex? I've had I've had this babe. I've been able to get this lady as my wife now, and I have sex. What happens after sex? That's where you start hearing things like you should have protected yourself. Didn't we do it together? Yeah. No stop. <laughs> There's a lot of frictions in those type of marriages because the the man is not matured enough. He doesn't know the consequence of what he's doing. It's only so just. In other words, you're trying to say that um, 
if you are over 30 and you have not settled for a man before now, there should be there should have been reasons that stopped you from getting married. Either your career or you just felt that you were the guys that you were seeing when you were in your yes. 20s were not ready. Yes. Okay. So you shouldn't. So now th th there is no place of worry. Well, well, for me, if you ask me what my my take on this is, uh, may I believe that there is no ladies should, should understand that there is no universal timeline for marriage. Like the fact that everybody is getting married doesn't mean that you should get married. Okay, and there is no specific age, you know, that you must you should be married to be happy. Everybody has their own timeline. Everybody has a timetable. And you're, you might even be happier if you marry later. Because sometimes you think that if I marry earlier, then that's, that's, then, I'll, then, then I'll be happy. I mean, marriage is not, marriage is not, it's not, it's not a movie. It's reality. It's reality. So people have, just understand as a lady that people have different paths. People have different priorities. Your priorities is different from your friend's priorities. Your path is different from your sister's path, your cousin's path, your mother's path. Because sometimes our mothers want to mold us into themselves. Oh, I got married when I was 20. I got married when I was 19. I got married when I was 23, 25. We're already older themselves. If you're not married at 25 in our age and days, then you're too old. Or they tell you, you know, if you get married on time, when your children grow up, you will be like siblings. You will grow up together. You grow together with your children. But they forget to tell us that those ladies that grew together with their children, it was a lot of growing up for them. They were practically children lost. They didn't know their own way. And so marriage at that time for them was not enjoyable. It was like an enduring thing. Many of them, many of those mamas shared their testimonies of how they almost ran away. <laughs> you know, they always, they almost ran away and left those children because the problems were too much. As you are saying, the men were not ready for marriage. Yeah. So everything laid on the shoulders of this young lady who was so lost, who was herself was a child. Young. And young she would always call her mom and ask her she mom, mom what did I do now? Too much. Mom, what do I do now? I'm overwhelmed now. And then their mom is practically helping them in building that young home, that young home yes. that they're building. So it's it's a lot of hassle for them. And some of them, if their husbands are not well to do and maybe not very organized, they they kind of ruffle it and struggle through that time and the age. By the time, I mean, except if they really have good genes. By the time you are thinking that they are growing together with their children, they are really looking so old and worn out. So that's my own little advice to, to a lady. Remember that your circumstances, your priorities, your path are different than the path of anybody that you know. Okay, so don't let it affect you because this is going to influence when you choose to get married or when you decide to settle for this guy. And then the ways of God are different. They are past finding out. The Bible says that the ways of God are past finding out. God knows what's best for you. Doesn't mean that the fact that you got married or you're getting, you're still 30 and there's nobody that you will not have a beautiful home. There's some lady that go that, that got married at 22 and they don't have children for yes. many years. So if it's just because of children that you want to get married so early, I think it's a it's a it's not a good, I don't want to say I think, I believe. It is not the right reason to get married. It's not because I just want to have children that you want to just jump into marriage. Okay, so you're being over 30, okay? And not married is normal. It's okay. If that's your... That, that's it's, your it's, path, it's good to have children. If no, it's not bad. Okay, don't... this. I don't want people to misunderstand me. I have children. So I don't want yeah. anybody to misunderstand me. I'm not saying that you guys should sit there and not get married and that children are not good and stuff. No. I'm saying that if you don't set your priority right, at the end of the day, children become like a burden to you. You will begin to long for your single days. One of the, one, I think one of the dangers of getting, one of the dangers for me of getting married very, very early, the danger of, in the long run, having a lot of children, too many children, you cannot, you cannot handle well, it depends on what you do. If you do the right thing and you protect yourself or you have, um, I don't know, what we do, 
you know, to prevent pregnancy. What do you call it now? Family planning. Family planning. <laughs> I even did it and I'm forgetting. Yeah, if you do the right family planning, you should manage how many children. And on the, on the flip side, there are ladies that get married on time and they really space their children adequately because they're not in a hurry. Do you know any, me, yeah, I don't know any, do you know any lady that got married at maybe 22? That did not have problem with childbirth? That did not have less than five children or four children? I don't know. Do yeah. You know anybody like that? Yeah. There are ladies like that that get married on time and don't have more than three children. It's all about what they discuss and what they plan. It depends on the couple. If you're not just there and no protection. It will take, it will take a lot of you know what it means to get married at 22? If you get married at 22, yeah. by the time they are 50, mm -hmm. or let me say 45, it's a, before they get to monopause, where they cannot have babies anymore, they will yeah. need to really, really do some, some protection and there will be a lot yeah, of friction. Family planning. You have family planning for the for five years. After your first baby, you put family planning for five years. And then after five years, if you don't want to do it like that, some people will advise you against doing family planning for that space of time because like you're starting all over again. And they say, okay, you have your first baby. Three years after, you take out the family planning, whatever it is, and then you have another baby. Two years after, if you're up to it, then you go for the third child or fourth child, no matter how many children you want. It doesn't really matter. Because nowadays, even the ladies that are marrying um, late, they freeze their eggs right? Many of them are freezing their eggs. When they freeze their eggs, they go, you have to have the money too. <laughs> to have IVF, is a lot. It's, it's, it costs some money. So if they have the money, they have the means, if they've used their time well and, you know, life has smiled at them and um, they've been lucky enough to have very good jobs and hard savings, then with the man together, they can do family planning and have children in twos or in threes. And at the end of the day, they are also getting the number of children that you you that started early have been, you know, taking your time to rear. They do it one time. They have the money. They have the support. I know it's going to be stressful, but we all know that after the age of five, six, children start getting somewhat independent. Six, seven, eight. Then you start enjoying your children. Uh, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to, to take care of three children, three toddlers at the same time. So that's one thing that ladies need to know. It's Beautiful to see those twins and triplets and quadruplets, but there's a lot of work involved in it. So be thinking ahead if you're career-minded and you're not yet married. I would say don't be worried, but be strategic. It's the time to plan. What are your plans? What's the time frame? When do you want to get married? Do you want to get married? Do you want to have a surrogate mother? And I'm sorry, this is a Christian... Um, platform but this is what happens and science is not is not wrong it's not sinful it's not ungodly okay you can have a surrogate mother and have children you can adopt children you can do so many things you know some people believe that they don't want it's not okay for you to have children out of uh to to to, to um rear children or train children without the presence of another man okay that's that's people's opinion yeah, there's no way in the Bible where it says that it's sinful or it's wrong to do that. Okay, so if that's what you want, it's left to you. If nobody is coming to you, like my my late dad would say, <laughs> are you going to marry yourself? Are you going to marry yourself? You're not going to force anybody to marry you. Keep living your life. Keep praying about it. If it's God's will, you'll find the right person. And maybe you might have even adopted those children. And down the road, when you are 50, you find somebody that you live the rest of your life with. You don't know how long you're going to live. People are living up to 90. Okay? If you marry at 50, you'd have lived with that guy for another 40 years. If God keeps you both alive. So let's have a positive spin to this whole, oh, I'm this age and I'm not yet married. What should I do? Marriage is a personal choice. It's a personal journey. <laughs> and it, it can be influenced by fa various factors. Your goals, your individual goals. I have a friend that wanted to be an, an accomplished architect before getting married. She wants to have uh, a couple of, you know, investment in her portfolio and she wants to have achieved some things because she felt that getting married is going to hinder her from achieving these things and concentration will be low. I've experienced it. I used to read a lot. I used to write a lot. I would. I thought I would maybe be a professor in the university or maybe writing nice stories or I don't know, 
traveling all over the place. But that has changed because I got married. I had to change my whole life to adjust and fit into my family schedule and plan and how how it is with my family right now. I have children that I'm training and that I'm that that are under me that expect a lot from me. So just look at your career path. What are your career paths? So and focus on finding the right partner. Focus on praying and looking having your and, eyes open. When you are over 30. That, if you get you, married out of when 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 you get married out of pressure, this there's a strong possibility that you marry the wrong person. Yes. In That's the true. long run, you now have children with the wrong person. <laughs> as in yeah. somebody that you don't really, really want to be with, as in you discover that I'm not supposed to be with this person. As in, mm. I, don't, I don't want to do life with this person. And then you now have children with somebody you don't want to do life with. And it's so traumatic and so a headache to have children with somebody you don't really want to do life with. And that maybe in the long run, the person is not well behaved. It's not cooperative. Hmm. Um, if if it doesn't work out, because even good marriages sometimes I don't know. Things doesn't I don't know. A lot of things are happening today that marriages are breaking up. That even good marriages that you from outside look at it that ah, this one they are good they love each other. You just hear that they get they break up. You don't understand. So if you get married out of because of societal pressure. I'm over 30. I need to have a man. I need, I must change my change my name. Some people are ashamed of keeping their father's name, having to continue to bear their dad's name. They want to change their name. It depends on cultures. There are so many cultures that even as a married woman, you still keep your maiden name. Yeah. It's all about well, culture. Cameroonians yeah, don't change. I know Cameroonians don't change their maiden name, most of them. I know Djibouti. And some all of Senegalese, some Senegalese don't change their last name because they believe that the child belongs to the father. So they, yes. they, they can put a poos, so wife, miss wife of so and so in their yes. but you know they, even they those, keep their name. And then their children even, bear the name of the their children bear the name of the man, the, the husband. So it's all about cultures. It's not about just dropping names. It's just about that societal status, that status that the society accord married women. And that's what some people, because some people in the church organization, even not, not just society, even in the church, you are looked upon like someone who is more responsible, someone who has something to say, who has um, something to bring to the table, who can advise young ladies because you're married. But not necessarily. I believe that... Paul was able to advise married people and talk about marriage. And today we're harping on his teachings on submission and love. But this guy, this man, this prophet, this, uh, I mean, this um, apostle never got married. He never got married. So if you are doing it because you think that, oh, uh, they won't because of my church or all that kind of thing, I think that's not the, the right, uh, the right reason to, to get married. So Let's let there be a change, a shift in mindset, and let's look at this age thing and marriage in the light of um God's plan for your life, your goals, your path, your priorities, the circumstances around you, around your life, and what do you want? What do you want? At the end of the day, your marriage is going to involve just you and that partner of yours. It doesn't involve any other person. Focus on asking yourself, have I found the right person? Rather than saying, oh, I'm over this. I'm this age now. I'm here now. I'm this old. I'm, you know, people said this. People said that. No, focus more on who is the right partner for me. And do I want to do life with this person? It's important to focus on the quality of the relationship that you are trying to build rather than trying to conform to societal expectations about when you should marry, how you should marry, who you should marry, how it should be, how it should look. You know, let's look away from those things. I and mean, this is me talking to you as a young lady. And that's, that was always my point of view. I remembered when I was a young lady, um, 
doing my master's and we were like, oh, now you're almost 30. Are you not going to get married? This was one person that has gotten married. The other person has gotten married. The other person has gotten married. Now you're, you're very few girls left at this age that are not yet married. And the men are, are almost finished. <laughs> the men are they almost finished. They are still men. There will still always be men. You always find somebody somewhere. So I just ask you, young lady, that you should try to be content, okay? Try to find fulfillment in yourself so that when you get married, you'll be fulfilled in your marriage. And that's what matters the most. That's the most important thing. Every other thing don't matter. At the end of the day, is are you fulfilled in this marriage, this relationship that you are getting into? Are you going to be fulfilled there? Focus on that. So on the other hand, if you're feeling concerned about getting married, or you have a specific worries about or in relation to marriage. I mean, it might be helpful to get counseling. So talk to somebody about it. Get professional counsel. Get medical counsel so that you know what to do. Should you be freezing your eggs? Should you... And check the, your egg count. Some people, I, I think... I, it might sound embarrassing, but it's not. Try to know um, where am I at and how. what are my chances? Now I'm 30. What are my chances? Should I be freezing my eggs now? Should I be um, trying to have children, <laughs> surrogates, mother or something? You know, I don't know. I know I'm pushing this thing. I'm saying it again and again. Another, another reason, you know, another reason for marriage, another reason why some ladies get married is the curiosity. They just want to discover what sexual, sexual intercourse That's for those who have never had sexual intercourse, right? Yes. To this. And then for those that have had, they are struggling with their sexual urges. Hmm. Some of the ladies that have had and are struggling with their sexual urges. They just That's need to be sexually fulfilled. Yes, and they, they, then the Bible says they keep teaching in church and they keep hearing, don't commit immorality, don't masturbate, don't do this, don't do that, you know, and then they, are, they feel, oh, I cannot, I cannot satisfy my sexual urge, I cannot masturbate, I cannot... I cannot go to meet anybody just okay, just to satisfy my sexual urge. Then I just need to get married. Now, if you are in that shoe, really, and the, the main reason why you really want to get married is just to satisfy your sexual urge so that you will not commit sin or you will not masturbate, then maybe you should drop your some of your some of your some of the reasons that made you to stay up to date. And get married, not to get and that you are not married. Some of the reasons, maybe, and you should make some consensus that you just take anybody, maybe you just take any man, as in any guy that comes, or you yourself, you can walk up to anyone or, or speak to anybody that you feel that okay, that you like, good. <laughs> they can yeah, do live you can with you. <laughs> yeah, you can, you think that is good for you when you're over 30 and you are, you are ready to assume you at a particular time in, in one's life, once you're able to take up responsibilities for what you do. Yeah, and you should be responsible for the choices you make, and yeah. don't be ashamed about the choices you make. Mm -hmm. So if you made the choice, you walk up to the guy. I feel that we can do life together. Mm -hmm. If you have a I, friend I, that you think that he's sitting on this on the fence, and it's like yeah. today Why he's showing you, you signs and signals, ask him. Of you just being a friend, just being a friend. Yeah, you know that, if you know that I'm going to be a good wife to you. Let's just marry them. Stop all this. Stop wasting my time. You know? Yeah, what are we doing together? It, it's just this is one question I always tell people to ask. Where are we going in this relationship? Like, what why are we here? What is the goal of this relationship that we have? Are we just platonic friends or are we, like what are we doing together? What are we? This is a question that you should you should be willing and not ashamed to ask as a lady, especially when you know that your biological clock is ticking. So just ask the question, pop the question, what are we? What is and this then sometimes going on when you ask those sort of questions, you're shocked that some of those guys they are just your friend. They don't they don't want to go do life with you. I'm telling you. So then, then then you start hearing them saying, "I did not know I was just a friend. I never knew she was taking it far." You are assuming that the guy does not. He's not thinking of you. He might be thinking of your friend. 
That's right. You might be so, your friend that you want. And just using you as a pedal to talk to your friend. See? Yeah. And if you don't ask, you don't know, right? You don't ask, you don't know. And just tell the guy, be frank, tell him, look, I'm not going to be offended. Okay, it's not going to, I'm not going to be mad. I want you to be open with me. And before you ask that question, come to that point where you wouldn't be offended with whatever answer that man gives to you, that man gives to you, or that friend gives to you. So ask it openly and sincerely so that uh, you know your, you know the way forward, you know where you are, you know whether you should, you should pitch your tent here or you should start in, looking forward to pitch your tent. And like in the case you, where you choose a guy, Mm -hmm. You choose a man for to satisfy your sexual urges. Whatever you find there, you have to be the only thing I would not. The only thing I would not advise you to manage is a guy that is violent. Okay, that's the only thing I would not advise you. But if the guy is not ready to take up responsibilities, not ready to take care of the children that you have with him, he's not ready to do anything in the house. Once he can satisfy you sexually, then you have to continue to be with the guy like that, you know. It's a marriage yeah. vow you have to change. Then you just try to live in peace with him. If the guy exactly. doesn't want to provide, you know that the main reason why I'm with this guy is because I wanted sexual, I wanted sexual satisfaction. You no. Know? So we must know. I think um we, women, Christian ladies, should begin to talk very seriously to themselves. Mm -hmm. Guys are coming to relationship. I was thinking about it some days ago. There are many guys, they come into married relationships. It's, it's transactional. I think they are, they are thinking about what you're going to bring into their lives. Yeah. Why don't you also think like that? What is he going Why to don't you think like that? Into my it's life. high time that Christian women start thinking like that. What is mm. this guy going to bring into my life? And let it be much more than... um much more than finance okay yeah you, you can yeah. get your finance as a lady you can get your finance you can buy your before the before the guy came around you're always buying your clothes your shoes your, yeah, your grocery so, you're taking care of your bills you're taking care of yourself so this guy does not? not want to take care of all of that mm -hmm. because you can take care of all of that by yourself once you the reason the male reason why you're marrying these guys you don't want to masturbate you don't want to be crushing another man or what have you then you stick with the guy and take anything you see there and try to make yourself happy and make your own no, guy a lot of no it's not about me i don't want to i mean i don't want to advise, i don't advise a lady to just get married to enjoy it just because of of sex no, people, people don't have sex it. people don't necessarily no, no, have sex every day no, so if you're not mind. It's a of the mind. I know it's a thing of the mind, but at yeah, the same time, the she, she came into the marriage relationship. The truth is that many a times women, we we many a times we women we think that we, we, we always want. I was listening to Kinsley who said that women they always like things as a package. They don't like half. They don't like. To, they don't like no. They want it to be whole. Yeah. They don't want a situation where you know you can if if this one is not there, I can no 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 no. They are thinking about it as a whole, a yes. good husband, an ideal man. Exactly. But then it when they started maybe that's what I'm now saying now. When they started cutting the man or something, they see that this man is not whole, but they think or they that they're going to change him. Can, we imagine that we can change the guy. You can change him. You can mold him into the kind of person. But as soon as you marry him, you will mold him into the, the whole man that you wanted. But this guy he was never whole. Yeah. He cannot be the whole man that you really wanted. So if you settle for half bread, you, you'll be ready to live with it. Be ready yeah. to live with bread. Yeah, but me, my advice to you, if you have stayed up till 30, don't get into a marriage where you'd your single life would have been better. And then you're miserable in that marriage. No, you could marry because if you primarily if you want to satisfy your you sexual urge and still be happy. Listen, because the guy is your buddy, the guy is your friend. 
There are other Listen, things that the guy can bring to the table. Listen no, to me. People should lady. cannot get married because of sex. That's what you think. That you, you men, it's me. men, look, it's men that think that they're getting married because of sex. We're not wired the same way. Women and men are not wired the same way. Before a woman allows you to have her body every day, she must have a semblance of there is more than just sex, right? So she's you're looking for someone that when you come home, you're able to talk to, you are, you are able to grow old with, you're able to spend time with you, that's exclusive to you, and that that has your back, that that can provide for you, protect you. And when I say provide for you, providence does not necessarily mean that you didn't have anything. But it just that you, even women that have, they still they're still happy for a man to give them something for them that's like a show of love right so you don't want to marry even if you're 30 or 40 or 50 most of those women they don't even want to marry a man that will be dependent to them they don't want to be the mama of the man that they're getting married to so you no, some, you don't have don't children want, of your own some don't care. no some don't care that's a different one. The ones that don't care are those women that you, you hardly see women like that, that don't care. That they take you into their house and then they feed you and they take care of you and everything. And those kind of women, usually those men that they take in, they're not older than them, they're younger than them. Right? Yes. So they're That's looking true. at the boy. He's, he's not like as if they're his mama. Like he's there. Like a, like a sugar mommy, mommy marriage kind of thing. They are married, but it's like the lady's like his mama. She's taking care of him and everything. But don't forget that a man is a man. One day he'll be fulfilled. One day he will, he will grow, he'll mature. And then he'll be tired of you, of having another mama in form of a wife. And sometimes they move on. And that's when the marriage start having problems and they start feeling that you're too old and that you are mothering him. You're like, you're like mother, like a mother to him and that you are, you know, you are acting, taking the place of his mom and you're giving him instructions and you start having cracks in the marriage. So if you already stayed long, my point is the same. If you've stayed already long, this long, be patient enough, you'll find someone like you. If you don't want children, you'll find someone that doesn't want children and be ready to go out of your race. Okay, if you are ready to go out of your race into other cultures, other other race, like if you are you are African or you are black or brown, you should be able to be open to finding a Caucasian, okay, or someone from another culture who has had children before, and maybe you you don't you don't mind getting together with that person because they don't want more children, or someone that doesn't want children. I know people that don't want children; they are guys. They don't even want children. So those are some of the talking points that you guys are going to have while you are courting or people call it dating or while you're while you are getting planning to get married or looking at if you would get married or not. This is some of the open conversation that you should be having. And you shouldn't shy away. Shouldn't shy away from that conversation. Make it an open conversation because you don't know. You don't know tomorrow and don't throw it under the table and say, OK, OK, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but it matters. So that's, this is an age where you don't hide your feelings. You're very plain. You're very open about your feeling. You say what you want. And if, it, if what you want is not what you're getting, you back out before you sign the marriage papers and you make it a deal. You, 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 you go, go away until you find someone that, that fits into or that both of you will, will you have that synergy. You will fit together and make and build a happy marriage together. You will always find somebody. There's always somebody somewhere. There's always somebody somewhere. Most times, people are waiting, waiting, waiting because they're looking for perfection. There's no perfection anywhere. There is no perfection anywhere. So anything you know. that you see, you can always get someone that is compatible with you, but you cannot find someone that's perfect. A good marriage is a coming together of two imperfect people to create something good. You're working together every day. You're striving to make the marriage work. You're trying to make each other happy, trying to be nice and kind to each other, loving each other like Christ loved the church. Uh, submissive way as a woman, then as a man, you're loving her. Submissiveness, as I was listening to this, this lady that handles this court judge, and she there's this episodes that we see like a tv series on youtube that i i used to watch and she she she's of the opinion that 
Her mama told her that if you got married to this man, it's because you are ready to submit to him. If you're not ready to submit to him, why did you get married? And her mama told her something. Stop getting mad. Most times we women, were always mad. We're always offended. Like we're always pissed. Pissed at things that the guy does. Th things that the guy says. Th he's not coming on time. He said he's going to come at 10. And he came at, at, at 11 o'clock. Or he said you were going to go out at so time. He said he's going to buy me this. He's going to buy fix this in the house. And he's not doing it right now. And we get mad. And when we get mad, we start breaking things and we things start to break. The relationship, communication is broken down and all that. And the man knows when you're mad. Your husband knows when you're pissed because you start answering the monotone, you start behaving that way. And her mama told her clearly that, stop getting mad. Oh, but he's not like this. Oh, but he's not doing this to me. Okay, yes. Don't say anything about it. Just shh, keep quiet. And sometimes we women forget to pray. It's not in your power. Sometimes you don't have the power to, to keep quiet. Ask God for the help. Like right now, Lord, Holy Spirit, I'm getting, I'm losing it. Give me the grace to just keep quiet and let this go. And many, many turbulence would have flown off if, if women learned to allow the Holy Spirit to take over them and let them to be under the control of the Holy Spirit and just not react to... um actions that are displayed or to whatever that their husband does we always want to react and a man wants to be right sometimes and you feel that why should i why me too i'm right so why should i agree you know so but sometimes you just let it go and it doesn't take anything from us seriously that's how me i've found i found that it doesn't take anything from from us and sometimes even if i don't agree i feel like there's no need what am i going to gain from arguing if my argue, arguing is going to just create sleepless night for me make me upset make me mad and i won't be able to concentrate so i just you know what i throw myself into work or i try to do what i like to do go for a walk go and ride my bicycle make myself happy in other ways do things that i like so that that episode of being upset and being mad can pass so that's the only little advice that me i had that me i would advise a a young lady who is at that age and she's contemplating. I've created my own space. I'm used to my own way of doing things. I fix my house this way. I have my own way already all set out, cast in, in the sand of, uh, in gold, <laughs> cast. I cannot change it. I don't want to change it. I don't want to anybody to interfere. If you really, really don't want anybody to interfere with the way you live your life, the way you do your things, the way your space is, then don't get married. Because your husband will definitely interfere with the way you do your things, with the way you manage your life. Because when you are a certain age, it's difficult to bear. But you have to be, you have to be intentional about it and say, you know what? I'm going to make this marriage work, whatever it takes. I will drop everything to make sure my marriage works. That's if you want to get married and you want to stay married because there's no need for you to get into marriage, get emotionally involved, get, you know, sexually involved and break it. It leaves cracks. There is no need. So choose your path. And everybody's path is unique. That's what I want you to remember. That's the only take I want you to go away with is that everybody's path, everyone's path is unique. And comparing your journey with another person with, all, with your friend, with your family, with your sister, your cousin, your colleague at work, it can lead to unnecessary stress. You just be stressed unnecessarily. You just lose sight of the good things that are happening in your life and that your life is actually happy. <laughs> Why? Why do you have to be let all these things come and, and rock your world and upset you? Things are going on for you. You have a job, you have a life, you have a car, you have investment. You are happy. In... in in the looking at it all, sitting down alone and asking yourself in a scale of one to ten, am I how much how how unhappy I am? Is it seven? Is it ten? Is it six? Is it three? And what makes me unhappy? So just trust in your decisions. Trust in your decisions. And even if you want to get married, listen to your gut feeling, listen to what the spirit, your child of God, listen, the Bible says those who are led of the Spirit of God, they are children of God, and the Spirit of God will lead you. Trust when he's leading you. Trust him and focus on building a healthy life. 
build a healthy life. And when you are healthy, when you are whole, you'll be able to build a healthy and fulfilling relationship when you find the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. And it does not come yet. And you're 30, you're 31, you're 32, you're 33, you're even 35, or even 36, even 38. Don't worry. Don't worry. But my advice to you is also that you need to change some things. Okay. You're a happy person. You're satisfied with yourself. You are um, fulfilled. Get out of your comfort zone. Don't always sit in the office all the time, the whole day, and you don't have time to socialize. But you need to socialize if you want to find somebody. You should be worried if you're not ready to socialize, you're not ready to mix, you know, and you want to get married, and you don't go out, and you don't interact with anybody. You are very reserved and you don't want to mix and maybe you're even wearing a ring some people you see them they wear a ring because they want people to respect them then you are putting huddles on your path so be friendly be nice be open be open because sometimes you your husband might just be i'm sorry your junior at work michelle obama married obama and she was senior to him right and they have a beautiful beautiful marriage did they have problems yes they did but did they scale through their problems yes they did are they now Next, next us, yes, their kids have practically gone and they are now living like they were before the kids came. So there's no need to be sad, upset, unnecessarily worked up. You are okay the way you are. You're perfect. You are beautiful. Enjoy your life and just enjoy your life right now. And then socialize, mix, join groups, join um communities, you know, do some volunteering, join the church, you know, young adult group, uh, go on vacations, visit other countries, visit other churches in other countries because you don't know where your partner will be. But change, sometimes change environment. I tell people, change your environment. If you're worried about your age and you're sitting in the same environment, that is, it's time to start going on vacations. Start to travel to other countries, visit other countries, other continents. And when you go there, be nice to people, open to people. You might meet somebody that doesn't speak English as good as you do, but he speaks Portuguese. The fact that he's speaking English bad doesn't mean that he's not educated. Don't assume. When you meet guys, do not assume. Just be open. And love will come your way, trust me. I'm just telling you, love will come your way. You will find a person for you. Don't worry. Everything will be all right. Do you have a final word for them? My final word is don't be worried. Rely on God. Your husband will come. If you are a guy, you're over 30 and getting worried. Your family members are bothering you. Mm -hmm. Be open-minded. And as I always tell some of my younger ones, I always say, be ready to be a giver. Learn to be a giver. Mm -hmm. If you are ready to share what you have, you are ready to be cooperative and loving and kind, you surely find a woman that will be that beautiful treasure that you have been looking for. She will come your way. Women love people that give. That one is a principle. So if you are a young man, you're over 30, you've not found somebody, maybe one of the reasons why you've not found somebody is really your character. Women are afraid, many ladies are afraid to say yes to you, to say yes to your proposal because they feel if they get married to you, they'll be miserable. They'll make their life miserable. Mm -hmm. So you have to change. If you have to, if you need to work on yourself, yes. go and work on yourself and make sure that you are a marriageable man. Yeah. As a woman, make sure that you are a marriageable woman. Be sweet, be nice. Uh, learn to talk, learn to, to behave, behave well. Mm -hmm. When you're coming into some cultures, if you are going cross-culturally, yeah, you need to learn the cultures of the person you're getting married to. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and then be ready to adapt also mm -hmm. uh, so that you're accepted and uh, you're uh, alive in that marriage in that, I mean, you're going to live more with your spouse really, 
but try to adjust and do what is right. And then your home will be a wonderful home. Have a right because that person you are getting married to, he also came from that culture too. So he might also be watching you, maybe accepting some of the things that you're doing that are not really, that don't go down well with him. Mm. Well, as you sh as it's shifting grounds for you and accommodating you and trying to adapt to you, you should also try to adapt to him. Mm. So that everything will go on very fine. Especially for those for those ones that want to some yeah, you are from African descent. Yeah. You want to get married to a Caucasian, the way they behave, different from the way we behave. Yes. Our norms and values, some of our norms and values are not the same. Yeah. So there is a lot of adjustment for you mm. and for him too. Because yeah. it should not be a one way thing, it should be a two way thing. So that because it's a lifelong journey. And you should be able to tell him when you're coming to marriage relationship with him, listen, I'm a Christian. I believe that marriage is till death do us pass. Nothing is going to separate us. I don't want you to wake up one day and say, c'est fini entre nous. And they say here in French, in French, c'est fini entre nous. It's over between us. I no more love you again. I'm mm -hmm. not interested in someone else. What have you? You need to you need to hear from him to know exactly what are his opinions about that. Does he think that the love can finish, it can end, and we will not continue again? You need to know that. You need to ask questions. Yeah. You need to know. And even if he's saying yes to you, really, really know whether he's saying yes to you just so that you can accept to be with him for the period of time he's fascinated. Uh, to be with you yeah. you need to know that too and some of the questions that you might need to get answered, you may need to um you know you, you might be you might be needing answers to some of them is only the holy spirit that can give you those right answers which is the spirit mm -hmm. of god that knows all men all truth that mm -hmm. can bring you to all truth it can tell you no <laughs> what you are going into might not be good for you and it's not only Today is not only uh, intercultural marriages that are breaking. We're seeing that even in same same country, same, many marriages are getting broken today. So you need to also let's not assume. Even if you are a, you are a member of the Deeper Life Bible Church and you you met that guy in Deeper Life Bible Church and you said that you're going to get married, you, you said you have known the will of God in marriage and all stuff like that. You need to also find out whether he really believes all that is being preached in the church. There's so mm -hmm. many. And then you need to also find out whether she also believes everything that we, that is that we preach from the Bible. Because a lot of people, they are in our midst, they don't believe everything that we preach. They are when in the face of challenge, when challenge will come, mm -hmm. we have various kinds of challenges that can come to marriage. To our marriage life. But in the face of challenges, they are ready to shift ground. They are ready to change their doctrinal beliefs mm -hmm. to suit their situation as at that time. And then you will be shocked or fall back to realize that this man, I married him in deeper life, but now I got, I'm, I'm realizing that he was actually interested or he loved girls that are not very much like me mm. was attracted to girls that are not very much like me <laughs> he just always all the while pretend but in reality he loved those type of girls he mm. loved for example he loved girls that use makeup he loved girls that use wigs he loved girls that wear pants he loved girls that on their earrings and jewelries, he loved those type of girls. But he just pretended, or I don't know, he just behaved as if he really, really loved those those or that, you know, the way you as a sister, Christian sister, always dressed. Mm -hmm. 
So then after marriage, you now discover it will be time for you to discover after or when challenges come now discover or you realize that this man he said he found the sister to marry in the church as if he if he got to know the will of god in he says he, he, he got to know the will of god in deeper life because maybe so that people watch people see or he didn't have the pedigree to be able to Get those ones that were, you know, as at the time when you started to be with him, he didn't have the financial things because those other, some of these other people from all these other places, they have their own, uh, the things they are looking out in back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you must be able to take them out to his trees, buy this, buy that, buy all those things. And many mm -hmm. of our sisters, some of our sisters are not like that. They are not mm -hmm. doing dating. No, in dating, dating takes money. It's dating expensive. Is not, dating is not cheap. Because if you want to date somebody, you have to take the person out to one hotel. And you will not be dating a lady that you're going to get married now and take her to book. You will not take her to a... To be more expensive side. restaurant. <laughs> ah, you have to take her... To to buy her gifts. Birthday gifts. Buy her gifts. Valentine so gifts. Just buy her <laughs> just any kind of gift. You buy her... You see, in those places, you hear, ah, I got him, a, I got her a Gucci bag. I got you a, a Lancaster bag for your, your birthday. It costs money. So for a car. Baby, it, costs, it costs money. For a car. Uh, and you buy, her, you need to buy her, for those that wear jewelry, you gold. need to buy her gold earrings. Diamond. Gold, diamond, <laughs> this, that, the other one. Yeah. So you need to buy her those type of things. Uh -huh. So, and then they need to change her hair, straight bone hair, whatever, all those things they, they wear. They need to buy those things also. Uh -huh. So, it is a little, it is a little bit, it's another kind of life, and it's a little bit more costly. So maybe you need to understand where you're coming from, who you are, in, you are really interacting with. Uh -huh. Does he really believe what you are being taught? Or is it just here because uh, they chose me as a leader or something like that? Or they, I'm a leader's daughter or I was chosen as a leader, whatever. You sing very well. Beautiful. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. So many things. He likes she, light in complexion girls. He likes dark yeah. girls. He yes. likes, I don't know, plumpy girls. Or he loves tall girls. And you're also <laughs> a tall lady. You know, he loves her plump and your plump. Mm -hmm. And also, you need to understand really the reason your profession. why. Or it's your profession that he's eyeing also. Yeah, that's true. Medical doctors, nurses, yes. he wants to marry a nurse so that, you know, you know how it is. And uh, yeah. a medical doctor, or he's in a country where <laughs> they need this profession, they're making better money, and then he... Or oh, he means... wants to marry his sister in the church because he feels that they have, we have been taught that you must be faithful, come what me, whatever happens, you must stay, and whatever you do, you must endure. <laughs> so he just <laughs> feels that she will not be able to do anything. So mm -hmm. once I marry her, she will not be able to do anything, she will stop with me. You know? So you need to understand all of that. And then at the same time, he's saying he's led to his sister in the church. At the same time, he's eyeing his colleagues at work. Mm. He flirts around his colleagues at work. Yeah, wow. He's flirting with his colleagues at work or his he, or, or colleagues, or maybe he's, he's, he's a postgraduate student or whatever. He's flirting with his postgraduate friends. Mm. But that is a part of his life that you don't know about. You know? So he, 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 he's somewhat satisfied with sexual logic. Flirting around with those girls, but you don't know. Mm -hmm. It's only many a times, only when you get married to the person that you discover or you start living with the person that you discover exactly who that person is and what were his true beliefs, his belief system. Yes. But that is a place of prayer. God can reveal those things to you. So don't be worried. Don't be worried. And I don't also believe that I've met with some people, friends, colleagues that. I've told me the they borrowed, they told me I don't have any child, I'm free. 
I'm free. I don't think when others are thinking about, yeah, I can't come to work because my child is sick. Uh, when this, that, they're in their phone, they're in their 40s. Child is sick. Eh? Me, I don't have any child. Mm. I don't have any child. I'm sick. And she's working and she's earning her salary and she's, she even has her house. So she has a house and she doesn't, she doesn't feel any mm -hmm. big deal in it. She feels fulfilled. Anyway, she wants to go to, she can go she to. She can go. She <laughs> put any constraint on herself. Yeah. She's free. Nobody's bugging her. She just lives her, lives her life. Go Nobody wherever she wants. wants. Yeah. It's answerable to nobody. Okay, any money that she accumulates or she gathers from salary or what have you, she has nephews and nieces that she takes care of. And they take care of their nieces, their nephews, their nieces. And they don't mind. That's and really imagine happy. the kind of the, imagine the kind of life a lady of that maybe you, you are in your 40s instead of breaking your head and getting yourself you know uh, worried and sad and what have you why don't you look for some you know your family members or or, or, or friends that you, you maybe okay you talk with them oh can you can i go uh go uh, travel with your 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 daughter to this or that. If you 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 must you must you just want to go out with your child or something. Or I want to take this child out and you take the child out to all those places that children go to and see a child happy being around you, seeing the joy of a child. It's wonderful too. It's mm. wonderful too seeing the joy of a child and then being so close knitted in the life of that child and being this child this person that like a role model to this to a child you can you know you can talk to the child maybe you you, you can give your time and tell the parents i can keep your if you guys want to go anywhere or something i can keep your baby for maybe a monday yeah, or something. you have yeah. a baby that you keep that that that's your companion and many many it will be a great relief if really they can trust you they see that you take good care of their child they will feel very happy yeah that's to true. leave their their children with you also to yeah. To, yeah so don't give yourself a headache or push yourself into the wrong relationship because of your age don't be worried Bible says you should not worry about anything. If you have any worry, take your worries, your all your needs by prayer and supplication. Let it be made known to God. And when we have prayed, God is not deaf. He hears. When you have prayed, He's not deaf. He hears. If He has not answered you, there must be a reason why He has not answered. Mm. If you look back at when he, he would have answered you, hmm? if you if God gives you the grace to be able to understand why you are not answered. For example, imagine a situation where uh, you wanted to marry a particular brother mm -hmm. and um, that brother was not interested in you or something like that. In the long run, he got married to someone else. If you ask, and then you, maybe after some time, you got married to another person. Maybe it took you some more years more to wait to be able to get the right person. Mm -hmm. Maybe God just wanted it like that to, to yeah. avert you from falling into a particular trap mm -hmm. uh, that you would have fallen into. Mm -hmm. If you ask, maybe if you take out your time to ask the spouse of that person that in the long run was able to marry, you may be shocked and surprised about what she's going through. And what God averted you from putting yeah. yourself in. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that's why we should not, don't, don't ever, uh, don't worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. Right. God bless you all. God bless you. If you watched this video up to this point, please don't forget to subscribe. To like this video if you have not already done so and share this video with your friends let us know in the comments what you think what your advice is for a lady or a male who is over 30 and worried thank you so much and see you in the next video god bless you 
and bye.